In this problem, I want to find the area between my polynomial function and the x-axis. So first thing we do is get the graphing calculator. Here I have an old version of the calculator, the FX9860. So first we go to graph mode, and I enter that function, and I get that curve. So the area, my marker is this area here, and that area there. Now because this area here is above the x-axis, there'll be a positive value, that area there will be a negative definite integral. To find those values, I'll go to G solve, then F6, and then my integral sign is there. And now I need to set my X intercepts. So negative three is the lower boundary. And I'm just gonna work out this uh, integral here. So up to zero is my upper boundary. So I get 11.25. Now I'll find this uh, value here between 0 and 1. So once again, G solve, F3, and my lower boundary is 0. Upper boundary is 1. And notice we get a, a negative for the definite integral, as we expect being underneath the x-axis. So if we wanted the area between the, the polynomial and the x-axis, we could add that value to the the negative of this value here to get 11.7, 11.8 units. If I were to work out the definite integral between negative 3 and 1, you'll see we won't get that. So once again, G solve, F3, my lower boundary of negative 3, and my upper boundary here of 1. And we get 10.6, not 11.2 plus 0.6. That would not be the area between the polynomial and the x-axis. So what I need to do on the calculator is actually have that area there above the x-axis. And I can do that by using the modulus function for this polynomial here. So there's the original polynomial. In the Y2, I'm now going to go option, then number, then absolute which is the modulus. Newer calculators will have two vertical lines here rather than ABS. I want the modulus of Y1. So Y is here and 1 is there. And if I execute on that, so the original function is still here, that polynomial there. But now you can see this Y value here has now been reflected in the x-axis. So the Y value is positive. These Y values are positive. That part of the curve has now been reflected, so the y values here are positive. So if I get rid of my original function, and just draw the modulus function. Now if I worked out the definite integral between minus three and plus one, both of these sections here are above the x-axis, and therefore I would actually get the area. So once again, G solve, F3 here, and the lower boundary, negative three, Upper boundary is 1 and 11.8. So if we add 11.2 to 11 point, sorry, to 0 0.6, we get our 11.8 value. So that now is the area between the polynomial and the x-axis. Now I'll attempt to do this by using the, the newer Casio, the FX G20. So here's my emulator. If I go to uh, graph, I have my function already. If I now draw it, I get my uh, cubic polynomial. I want the area between here and here. So if I go G solve, and then F6, and F3 again. Now I've got some more choices down here on the newer calculator. And if I go for mixed here, uh, it's highlighted already negative three, so I can execute on that. If I then push across, and I want the final root of one, execute on that. It highlights it. Now notice the definite integral here is not the area. I've got 10.6, we have a positive and a negative value. But we have this here, which indicates the area of 11.83. That's the area which you can still see down here from the older calculator. So it does it for you very quickly without having to worry about the absolute function.